Hello and welcome to Church Online. It's so great to have you with us today. My name's Lucy. And my name's Theo. And we are part of the team at Life Unlimited Church. We will be hosting you today. Um, if you are on Facebook and joining us today, why don't you comment and let us know you're here? Why don't you create a watch party and invite your family and friends? Because we are in for a great service today. It's going to be so good. In fact, Lucy, there are people joining us live right now on Facebook. Hey, Joey Stevens, how are you? So good to see you. Hi, Terry Otts. Preet Shakespeare, good morning to you. Peter McDonald, good morning, Peter and Sandra. Stephen Fraser, good morning, guys. Hey, we are in for a fantastic morning and we're going to be honouring the Anzacs as well this morning. So I'm very excited about that. But there's so much coming up. We've got Mark Spencer sharing a message. We've got live worship on this morning. We're going to be praying over the needs through the prayer requests and, and the praise reports this morning. It's going to be fantastic. Can't wait. And during the past week, we've had such beautiful weather and we've probably had a little bit of extra time due to yeah. COVID-19. So I would love to hear from everybody about what you've been up to. I miss you all so much. And yeah. why don't you comment in the chat box and just let us know how your past week has been and what you've been up to during the beautiful weather. Some of the highlights, I've noticed that Lucy, that you've been going on a lot of bushwalks lately. We, I have. We all have, the condors. I, I even got lost on one occasion. Yeah, we were yeah. walking around for two and a half hours. And, <laughs> and another thing is I've been learning Photoshop, learning how to do graphics and upskilling ourselves. And maybe write in the comment section what you're doing to make the most of this time uh, during COVID-19 and just making a positive out of it. Fantastic. Also, don't forget Kids Life Online Experience directly after this service. You can check it out on the Life You See website or our church app this morning. It will be fantastic. Also, we have committed as an ACC church to be praying every night at 7 p.m. or 1900 hours as a response to COVID-19. And we're going to believe that it is going to end. We're going to pray that God would strengthen those who are feeling weak, that He'd comfort those who are mourning and he'd also heal those who are feeling sick in this time, which is uh, going to be very, very powerful. And Lucy's gonna be talking about the church app. Yes, so we have our church app. So um, don't forget that we can give our tithes and our offering online by the church app um, and also via our website. Yes, absolutely. And also, if you uh, want to get a hold of that church app, what you need to do is Get your camera phone and put it over the QR code that's coming up on the screen right now and uh, it'll take you to a link straight to that app. It'll take you to the Tithely app and in that Tithely app, type in Life Unlimited Church and you'll be able to do download that app. Easy as that. Also, for don't forget to submit your prayer requests because at the end of the service, we're going to be praying over those prayer requests and remember, online church link or the app homepage. Our website address is lifeuc.com.au. And there, online church, you'll be able to see a tab where you can pray, you can give, or you can make a decision for Christ. And talking about prayer, Tao, we're gonna pray in a moment and cross over to worship. Absolutely, we are. Hey, just another reminder as well, let's continue to give in this season because we don't want to forget that and also to missions as well. We can do that through the church app or the church website as well. But we are going to pray for the nation. We are going to join our faith together right now. What a great opportunity before we throw it over to the worship team. So why don't you join with me at home wherever you are and let's pray for our wonderful country. Father, thank you so much. For Australia. Thank you so much for the great Southland of the Holy Spirit. We are so grateful, God, that you are blessing us, that your hand of protection is over us. We pray for all those who are feeling sick right now, for them to feel healed and nourished and strengthened. We also pray for those who feel discouraged, Lord God, that you would give them hope, Lord God. We pray for those, Father God, that are feeling purposeless. Give them purpose. Let them dream again, Father. We so thank you that throughout this service that we're going to be impacted by you. Yes. So we open ourselves up to being changed by your Holy Spirit. We so thank you for that, God. And what we're going to do now is we're going to throw it over to the worship yeah. team. 
Nicole, how are you going? Hi, Nicole. Hello, Tay and Lou. So good, thank you. How are you? Good. So good. You guys are looking great. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you. Good morning, church. We're so glad that we can be streaming to you this morning. We're going to declare who our God is this morning. We're going to sing Lion and the Lamb. So we just invite you to come sing and praise Him with us. Fantastic. Hey, it's always so great to praise God and to thank Him and to remember all the great things that He's doing in our lives. And uh, 
we have a special treat for everybody at home this morning. Mm -hmm. We're actually going to throw over live to the Australian War Memorial with our very own senior pastors, the beloved pastors Sean and Linda Stanton. So good to see you guys. Thanks, Teo and Lucy. It is great to be here today. It is so good to have you here. As Teo and Lucy said, we're at the Australian War Memorial and we're so excited because we've got such a special service planned for today. I'm standing next to a monument with ne lest we forget and it's from Camp Russell, Afghanistan where our troops, particularly special forces, were based until 2013. And like Linda said, we've got some special things coming up in the service and we're looking forward to the word in a moment. But we've been struggling out here a little bit with the weather. It's a saying in Canberra that uh, winter arrives on the Anzac weekend and it seems like it's arriving right now. And you've managed to keep your hair looking pretty good, Linda. Well, it's starting to rain right now. I know that they say winter starts when we hit the Anzac weekend, but no, I want autumn. And it's pretty cold, it's pretty windy, and it's raining out here, but still, we're in for a great service. We're going to be God's frozen chosen out here, but right now we're going to hand you across to Mark Spencer, one of our elders, who's going to bring the word of God to you. Go for it, Mark. Thanks, Sean Linda. I'm certainly pleased to be here uh, in the nice, warm, comfy church rolling out there with you guys at the War Memorial. Um, I'm not sure, church, whether you saw the, the clip we posted from Mark Edwards from uh, City Hope Church in Ipswich yesterday uh, on Anzac Day. Uh, I hope you did. It's, it's a, a really great, great presentation he's put together. An overview of World War I and its impact on, on our nation. Uh, how it was really the, the catalyst for the creation of the Australian War Memorial where Sean and Linda are now. How it helped to really solidify um, our identity as a nation and create that, that sense of Australia as an independent nation. He also talked about the impact of the war on the Australian people and the importance of remembrance. And that's what we're doing this Anzac Day long weekend. We're remembering. Remembering those who've died, remembering those who served, their sacrifice. And service is a sacrifice, we know that. And if you're one of those people, if you're one of those people who are serving in our, our military forces, we want to thank you. We want to thank you for your service, for your sacrifice. And if you're the family of one of those, those people, if you're the father and mother or son or daughter or spouse of someone who's serving, we want to thank you. It's not just the, the person who serves, but also their family who sacrifices as well. And living in Canberra, we're very aware of that, that sacrifice of the whole family. Thank you. I want to play a short clip now from the presentation that we, we posted yesterday. It's impossible for me to convey the trauma, the effect that World War I had upon our nation. But if there's one particular painting that demonstrates that trauma, it's the one behind me. This painting was painted in 1927 by Will Longstaff and it's called Men and Gate at Midnight. It's a poignant painting because it shows well, I can only describe it this way, the dead rising, coming out of their places where no one knew they were even buried. No one even knew they had fallen by God. And here it is, hauntingly behind me. I can't help but think of the fathers and the mothers and the brothers and the sisters and the families that lost loved ones, but didn't just lose loved ones, but never ever got to see the grave where their loved one lay. In fact, the number of soldiers that were never recovered is in its tens of thousands. I'm not sure whether you've seen that painting, uh, Men and Gate at Midnight. I'd not seen it before Mark, Pastor Mark talked about it. Obviously, it's a powerful painting. When you look at it, the, the dark foreboding sky, the, the little glimpses of the red poppies in the foreground, and that, that just almost infinite number of, of bodies, of soldiers rising up 
stretching off, stretching off into the distance. It's certainly a powerful image. When Mark was talking about it, it wasn't so much the painting that struck me, it was the way he described uh, the impact on the families of those who, who didn't return, who didn't have a grave. The visceral reaction that, that he, he had when he talked about those who, who died without a known grave. The impact on the families, the, the mothers, the fathers, the brothers, the sisters, who never got to see the graves of their loved ones. And we're going to be talking a little bit about death this morning. And I know it's a very sensitive topic for some, a very emotional topic, a very raw topic. And I certainly don't want to be making light of the sacrifice of those who died in our wars or I don't want to make light of, of what you might be experiencing if you've lost a loved one, whether it's in a war or otherwise. So please forgive me, I'm not, not wanting to make light of any of that pain or suffering, any loss you might have suffered. Earlier in the documentary, they, they talk about the impact of the family on the families of those who didn't return. Those who didn't return without a grave, those who were, were missing, presumed dead. The anguished letters that those families wrote to the government, wanting that sense of closure, needing that sense of a place to go, a place to be able to remember their loved ones from. And that really speaks to that, that part deep down in all of us, that, that need we all have to know our place in history, our place in time and space, our place in eternity. And all the rituals and practices around death you know, are part of establishing that, having a grave where we can go and remember someone. And without that, those people were bereft. Their anguish, their suffering was magnified. Now, I'm not sure whether uh, you've done what I used to do. And uh, Pastor Sean and Linda are out the War Memorial, so I can, I can have a little bit of a confession now, and they'll, they'll never know. We'll keep this our secret. But when I used to read the Old Testament, I'd get to those genealogies at the beginning of, the, of some of the Old Testament books. And, you know, so-and-so begets so-and-so, begets so-and-so, begets so-and-so, and on and on, until you get to the hero of that particular story. And when I first started reading my Bible, I used to skip over those. I used to think they were unimportant, which was a bit of a challenge because I knew that all Scripture was God-breathed and useful for instruction. But I thought they were so boring. As I've got a little older and hopefully a little wiser, I've also watched my father get a little older. And like many people, as they, they mature, they, they seem to have a, a greater interest in family history. And my, da my dad's done the whole family history thing. I can tell you our history uh, going back to 1857 if you really want to spend some time with me. Um, but you'll probably find that a little bit boring too. But again, that, that sense of needing to connect with that family history, those genealogies that, that put people in the context of who they are, where they came from, that anguish of the, the lost who didn't have somewhere to mourn, didn't have a grave, didn't have that closure. It's all part of that same deep, deep longing to know who we are. That part of our need to be known, to have a past and a future, to have a place in eternity, to be remembered. And of course, on Anzac Day, it's what we're doing. We're remembering. Remembering the loss, remembering the sacrifice, remembering the service. A couple of weeks ago at Easter, as Christians, we remembered. We remembered the death and resurrection of our Christ. And that sense of needing to remember is deep in all of us. That sense of loss when we haven't got graves, we don't, we don't have a place to go and, and mourn. We don't have a tangible marker, that place in history where we can point to. So we make those memorials. And Pastor Sean and Linda at one of those today, the Australian War Memorial. But in every town, country, city across the nation, there are those memorials to those who have fallen. That tangible marker, that place in history. Now, of course, God knows, knows this need. He, he made us. He, he wove us together in the womb. He knows our need for that. And when you look at uh, 
When you look at your Bible, it's full of genealogies to anchor people, to give you a sense of how those people fit into his story, their history, their family, their past, their future. It's full of stories of feasts and festivals and traditions and customs. And one of those, a really central one, is the story of the Passover. You know, we read in Exodus chapter 12 of the way that God miraculously rescued, protected his people, and then led them out of the slavery in Egypt to the promised land. And the Israelites were commanded in, in verse 14, this is a day you are to commemorate. For the generations to come, you shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. And throughout history, the Jewish people have done exactly that. Through the depths of the Holocaust, in concentration camps, there are stories of Jews gathering together, scrounging what they could, they could find to be able to celebrate the Passover. And of course, that's a forerunner of what Christ was to do. Whenever we come together as, as believers and, and share communion, we remember the death and resurrection of Christ. We remember his sacrifice. We come around the new Passover table. As we read in Luke chapter 22 and all the other gospel accounts, it was at the Passover that Jesus and his disciples gathered for what we now call the Last Supper. The blood of the Lamb that protected the Israelites is replaced by the blood of Christ. The escape to the promised land is replaced by the promise of eternal life. And while Christ had a grave, we read in John chapter 22 of the torment of Mary Magdalene. It talks about the fact that they had taken the Lord out of the tomb and she didn't know where they'd put him. She came to prepare the body with spices and perfumes. And she stood outside the tomb crying, unable to perform those rituals, those customs that were part of that moment in time. Now, of course, all the disciples rejoiced when Christ later on appeared to them. That evidence that we have that he overcome overcame the curse of death. The good news we remember each Easter, not the death of Christ as much as his resurrection. We remember each Easter. So we think again of those tens of thousands of soldiers buried somewhere in Europe. One of those soldiers did return. In 1998, after being exhumed from a grave in France, the unknown soldier was returned to Australia and interred at the Australian War Memorial. The Prime Minister at the time, Paul Keating, delivered a very powerful eulogy. Let me read just part of that to you. We do not know this Australian's name and we never will. We do not know his rank or his battalion. We do not know where he was born nor precisely how and when he died. We do not know where in Australia he'd made his home or when he left for the battlefields of Europe. We do not know his age or his circumstances, whether he was from the city or the bush, what occupation he left to become a soldier, what religion, if he had a religion, if he was married or single. We do not know who loved him or whom he loved. If he had children, we do not know who they are. His family is lost to us as he was lost to them. We will never know who this Australian was. Yet he has always been among those whom we have honoured. We know he was one of the 45,000 Australians who died on the Western Front. One of the 416,000 Australians who volunteered for service in the First World War. One of the 324,000 Australians who served overseas in that war. And one of the 60,000 Australians who died on foreign soil. One of the 100,000 Australians who have died in wars this century. He 
he goes on with these powerful words. He is all of them. He is one of us. He is all of them. He is one of us. Those words are, are inscribed on the grave of the unknown soldier in the Australian War Memorial. Powerful words indeed. As I think of those words and, and more broadly of the Anzac tradition, when you start reading about what Anzac means, you hear the Anzacs described as being innovative, laconic, fearless, loyal, not afraid to question authority. You read about the Anzac tradition reflecting ideals of courage, endurance and mateship. Now, as Australians, we don't... We don't focus on any grand battle, any Midway or Trafalgar or Wellington or Waterloo. We don't focus on any great leader, or Napoleon or Wellington or MacArthur. We focus on the all of them, the one of us. The soldiers, the sailors, the airmen. The all of them, the one of us. As I think about Christ this morning, I think about how he embodies so many of those same characteristics. The Messiah that the Jews expected to be a great leader came as a humble carpenter. He came fully man despite being the son of God. He was truly one of us. He died like all of them, yet rose from the dead for all of us. Now, I don't want to draw too long a bow about this or, or deify the unknown soldier. But that Anzac tradition points me back to Christ and his death and his sacrifice. Let's go back to Pastor Mark Edwards. This painting haunts me to a certain degree, but it should haunt you as well. And it should actually say to you that the cost of the war is more than we can ever even articulate in words. It seems to me that the artist got it right. Anzac Day is about loss, it's about grief, but Anzac Day is also about remembrance. Lest we forget. Lest we forget. I talked about the unknown soldier having inscribed on his grave the, all of them, one of us. He also has inscribed upon that that tombstone, the same words that are inscribed upon all of the graves of the unknown soldiers, known unto God. He is known unto God. We are all known unto God. We all have a past and a future because we are known unto God. He has a past and a future because he is known unto God. We can all share in that because that same hope, that same being known to God applies to all of us today as it has always through the past. And I've talked a little bit about God this morning and the sacrifice of his son Jesus to ensure that we have eternal life. Now he did that to pay the price for sin. Sin is just a fancy word for, for disobeying God's laws. And we've all done that in little ways, in big ways. We can't make amends for that. So God sent his son to make, make amends, to pay that price for us. He's a just God. Someone had to pay that price and he sent his son to do that for us. If you want to know that God, if you want to not just be known by him, but know him, I'm just going to invite you this morning to join us in a simple prayer that's the first step in making that happen. Let's all pray together the words on the screen. Dear God, I'm sorry that I've excluded you from my life. 
I can never be good enough to earn forgiveness. I turn away from my sin and open my heart to receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and Saviour. Thank you for loving me, forgiving me, accepting me, and giving me the gift of eternal life. Today, Jesus, I've decided to follow you. Now, if you've prayed that prayer for the first time, or maybe you're, you're making a, a recommitment to Christ, there'll be a, a little button on our, our church website, I prayed this prayer, or under the Jesus link on our app. You can go onto our app, click through the Jesus link, and there's a little box to say, I prayed that prayer. Or maybe you're watching this later on, uh, watching a repeat uh, later on. Click on the Jesus tab on the top of our website and you'll scroll down and be able to click on that that little link, I prayed this prayer. We just want to help you know more about this God that knows you. And by doing that, we'll be able to do that to follow up. As I conclude this morning, finish our Anzac weekend message. I just want to read some famous words to you, the ode. The fourth stanza of the poem For the Fallen by Lawrence Binion. Words we all know. They shall grow not old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Thanks for joining with me this morning. I hand back to, to Teo and Lucy. Thanks so much, Mark Spencer, Thank for you. such a heart-touching message and such a great honour to those who have served and to those who are currently serving. We honour you. Thank you so much for all that you have done and all that you continue to do to make this nation the best nation. Thank you so much. And we just wanted to say a massive welcome to all those who have just joined now and to all those who are continuing to join us here on Life You See Online. And make sure you write a comment in the comment section of Facebook Live. Let us know you're here because at the end of the service, we're going to be commenting about your comments. And don't forget, we've got Kids Life Online Experience after this service and so you want to make sure that you and your children get ready for that because we've been hearing so many positive reports about kids life and services and how they're going and so continue to tune into that which would be fantastic and welcome once again hey lucy i hear that there's uh, some playlists some life you see playlists can you maybe just inform us about those ones yeah so we have some new life you see playlists that you can listen to to fill your home or your car with worship or you could even listen to it while you exercise um, and there's three ways that you can access that playlist. That the first way is on Spotify. You can just type in Life You See. The second way is through Instagram. You can connect to our Life You See Bell Conan bio and click on the link or click on the link in our church newsletter. Be Fantastic. sure to listen to that So playlist. good, whether you're in the car, whether you're on the way home, mm. it's a great encouragement to you just to put on some of God's, uh, some of God's encouragements through music. It's really good. Hey, once again, we are going to cross over to Pastor Sean and Linda Standen at the Australian War Memorial. Thank you, Tay and Lucy. And thank you, Mark, for that message. It was such a blessing. Just their thought that Jesus is one of us. And the scripture declares that he's Emmanuel, God with us. And I believe that whoever you are, he's with you as you open your heart and life to him. It's a real privilege to have with me right now, or with us right now, uh, um, Gary Martin, his near Commodore, and we've asked him to pray for those who've served, the families, and for our nation. But Gary, as I hand to you, what did you do yesterday? Well, yesterday was definitely one of those new Australian 2020 dawn vigils, listening to the uh, ceremony that was held here at the, Air, at the uh, Australian, Air, <laughs> Australian War Memorial, I should say and then going out onto the driveway, seeing neighbours down there in uniform as well. We've got a bunch of RAFIs, navies, and army people there. To be able to hold that vigil and do it was just perfect, just perfect. So it was a great day. 
Yeah, we did a simple thing. Why don't you pray? Sure. Thanks, Sean. Let's bow our heads and pray today. Lord God, on this weekend, we remember the sacrifice of the first Anzacs, along with the generations of men and women who have died protecting our nation. We commemorate their bravery and pray comfort for all the families that lost loved ones. And Lord, we also remember those who continue to bear the scars of their service, physical, mental, and spiritual. May we as a nation always be generous in caring for them and providing for their needs. And God, we ask for that continued protection over the Australian Defence Force sailors, soldiers, and airmen who are deployed both offshore and here in Australia, and also for their families who are looking forward to their loved ones' safe return. And so, Lord, on this particular Anzac weekend, may we, as Australians, be challenged by that costly sacrifice made by our Defence Force members to be less inwardly focused and dedicate ourselves afresh to working for peace on our world, our nation, and with our relationships with each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Gary, Air Commodore. We appreciate you joining us today. Uh, we are going to move on and give you an opportunity or remind you of an opportunity to give, bring in your tithes and offerings. And on this Anzac weekend where we remember so much sacrifice, I was just reminded of something that David said when he was offered a free piece of land on which to build the temple. And he said, no, I'll pay full price. I will not offer to the Lord something that does not cost me. And we're not asking people to do outrageous things, but a reminder that our giving is unto the Lord and the Lord honors that. And so there's opportunity to give off our website or for the Life You See app. And God bless you as you do that. You're making a difference as we continue to reach out to help people with services, with our Canberra City Care services and everything else we continue to do as a church. So God bless you. I'm going to hand you back to Tay and Lucy now. Thank you so much, Pastor Sean and Linda. And thank you so much also to Gary Hurrigan. We really value and appreciate you guys. Mm. And uh, on to the service with a bit of a promotion. We are going to continue uh, the intake in April with our Alpha Crucis students. And so make sure you just check out the information on the church website, Alpha Crucis, go to the next level in your relationship with God, in His Word. It's fantastic. It's really powerful. Hey, that was such a fantastic message by Mark Spencer. And I just yeah. uh, had a few uh, dot points of some highlights and takeaways from that message. And I love it how Mark said, while the Jewish leaders looked for the Messiah to be a great leader, he came as a humble carpenter. He came on earth fully man, despite being the son of God. He was truly one of us. He died like all of them, yet rose from the dead for all of us. And you know, the theme of sacrifice really stood out for me, Teo. It was a great message of sacrifice and what a great sacrifice God has made on our behalf, giving us his very best to cover all our wrongs and even our very worst. We salute you, we thank you so mm. much. And we're gonna cross over now to worship. And so as we worship God, uh, open up our hearts because we're going to receive something from God and, and over to you, worship team. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Let's just stay in our prepared, grateful hearts as we remember the cross and we look to our Saviour. Let all of our beings express gratitude to you this morning, Jesus. Let everything that you created us to be glorify you.
This morning, we claim your victory, your victory of freedom, the victory of power for healing and peace. And this morning, we speak those declarations, that victory over every home this morning. We speak the name of Jesus. We speak power. We speak freedom. And we speak peace. Your
darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus You silence fear Oh Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus Your name is a light That the shadows can't deny powerful time in God's presence in worship. Thank you so much, worship team, for that experience that you've provided us with. God's presence, God's spirit, so powerful what he can do in your life. And hey, we're going to cross live over again to the Australian War Memorial with Pastor Sean Stanton. Thank you, worship team. That was just outstanding. It's now my privilege to just speak and declare, pray a blessing over each and every one of you as you go out into this week. So may the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord show his favor to you and give you his peace. God bless you, church. Have a great week. And remember, Jesus is Emmanuel, God with you. Thank you so much, Pastor Sean. Thank you. Thank you to all those who've submitted prayer requests. Over the last week, we are so grateful that we have been given the opportunity to stand beside you in prayer and just believe that God is going to cause breakthrough on your behalf. And uh, I'm going to ask Lucy if you can read out some of those prayer requests that we've received. Yeah, we have a number of prayer requests. Um, so firstly, healing for um, hearing and memory loss. We've got someone praying for their little brother who has fractured their toe and sprained their wrist. Um, we've got someone praying for salvation as their brother-in-law and their mother does not currently know Jesus. Jesus. And we've got someone praying for a child who um, currently has a brain tumour. They're praying for healing. And for all those who have not submitted a prayer request, I would like to invite you to join your prayer request with all those and uh, believe for yourself that God is going to move. Why don't we join our faith together and pray? Father God, thank you so much, Lord, that you are powerfully working. Lord God, thank you that your word says that you're not only able, but you are willing. You're a God that wants to move on our behalf, Lord God. You're a God that is swift to move on our behalf. And we just pray for health. We pray for strength. We pray for healing over every individual. We pray, Lord God, that you continue to draw people to your presence, Lord God. Draw people to, to yourself through kindness, Lord God. Those who don't know Jesus, those who are our family members, our mother-in-laws, our brothers, our next door neighbors, Lord God. Those who we're praying for, Father, we pray, Lord God, for all of those people, Lord God. We are stepping in the gap, standing in the gap for them, Lord God, praying for them to know who you are, Father. We also pray, Lord God, if there's any uh, major sicknesses, Lord God, they aren't major to you, Lord God, in, in the sense that you are powerful, Lord God. There is no name above 
or more powerful than the name of Jesus. And we declare that name over every situation, over every relationship, over every circumstance in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen. So good. And thank you so much for everybody that's commented on Facebook Live. And uh, we're going to have a look at some of the comments that you guys have written. And uh, let's start with those comments. Yeah. So we have a comment from Melody Carruthers. She says, hi, church. I'm here with my mum in New South Wales. Miss you all. We miss you, Melody. We miss you too, Melody. Rach Chakawatsa, our God is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. Thank you, Rach. Leighton Gallagher, service is a sacrifice. How true on the battlefield. How true in our Christian lives. Grateful for the team for putting this together. Thank you. So good. Karen Jeb, we all want to know our place and where we are to play a part in the future. Lisa Jacks, remembering the Indigenous soldiers who were not allowed to return back to Australia after World War I, as they were not considered citizens after the war finished. God continue to heal this nation. Absolutely. Absolutely. Cameron Jones, thanks, Mark. This is beautiful. And thanks to all who have served. Another comment from Leighton and Grace, remembering the sacrifices of the past puts into context present sufferings as well as our future hope, God in every moment. Fantastic. And lastly, the not least, Rach Chakawatsa, we are known unto God. We have a past and a future because we are known unto God. How good is that? So fantastic. And uh, we are honored right now. We're going to zoom live over to the house of the Dio's. Hey, guys, how Hi. are you? Ricky and Katie Dio. How are you going? <laughs> yeah, going really well. Oh, okay. Really well. Nice to see you guys. You're looking really, really cool there. Yeah, uh, very cool. Thank you. Awesome. So are you. So are you. <laughs> and it's so great to be with you today. How's your family been? Family's good. Yeah, yeah. Really? I think like most, it's been interesting managing uh, family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And school starting this and week. School starting so this week. All those routines. So, yeah. Praying for all the teachers who are, are getting everything ready online yeah. for us. Yeah. They're a blessing. Very grateful for those teachers. Yeah. Definitely. We're good. We're good. <laughs> so can I ask you, what has God been speaking to you about during this time? Yeah. Uh, well, crazy time, obviously. Yeah. Um, I think for me specifically, and um, uh, I'm sure Katie might be a little bit different maybe, but uh, for me, it's really been about getting back to the essential stuff. Mm. You know, it's, there's a lot of the stuff that we kind of crowd our world with is kind of taken away a little bit. And so I think it's, it's been really, it's important that feeling um, that we connect, like the, the importance of discipleship and, 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 and keeping connected yeah. uh, is so much more important now getting into this world, I think with, with less distractions, there's no reason for us not to even get even more connected to Christ and, and really work on this relationship a whole lot more. And so I think that's been for me what God is saying is it's 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 a time to just take this opportunity to really get back to the essentials of, of who you are and the faith and 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 why you know why we're here and what, what we're doing, what's the importance. Yeah. So family obviously as well. So yeah. yeah that's that's kind of my yeah. Okay. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. And, and for all those who are viewing right now, we've got so many people online, so many people with us right now. And what's your encouragement to everybody right now? I guess um, at the beginning when all this took place, I remember it, it was like March 22nd was our first church online. And if you're looking online, there was lots of memes, lots of discussions yeah. about on the other side of this season, what we have achieved and uh, all these things do, 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 do. Um, and I think I recently just come to the conclusion, which I hope is encouraging to people, is it's not necessarily about what we have achieved or what we have done in this time. It's, we just gotta do what God is calling us to do. So if you're, if you're a parent, do parenting well. If you're in the marketplace, do that well. And this morning at our pre-service meeting, we had our first Zoom yeah, pre-service meeting this morning, which was really cool. The city guys. Yeah, uh, Noel, yeah, Noel gave us the word salt. And um, just about being a salt in our work, you know, being a salt in the world and being a light. And um, I guess my encouragement is don't get caught up too much in the being, uh, in the doing of things, but just be a salt, mm -hmm. be a salt to, in the world. 
That's yeah. so That's great, great, Katie. Exciting. That's amazing. And I think, yeah, being instead of doing is really important in this season. Um, so what spiritual survival tips would you have for families and individuals during this season? Because it might be a bit challenging for some people. So what tips yeah. do you have for us? I think... Um, I think we've got to remember that uh, we're body, mind, soul and spirit. So if we're taking care of ourselves holistically, we're yeah. going to be healthy. And so some things that we've thought about uh, is trying to video trying call. To do, yeah. yeah, trying to. Still, you're not ticking all them off most of the time, all the time, but trying to video call or call someone, that's really good for your heart and your soul. Yeah. Um, make sure that you're creating some sort of routine in your life. So yeah. going to bed at a yeah. set time. Try not no, to stay in your pajamas all day. Yeah, no Netflix <laughs> and chill all the time. Um, <laughs> Making sure that maybe you're balancing water and caffeine and you're like all these different little <laughs> yeah. things. Get some um, sunshine. Yeah, get some sunshine, go for walks. And maybe yeah. just, maybe this is a good one for people's mental health and just connecting with one another is think of something kind, an act of kindness that you can do for other people. Um, it'll be really good for your own self yeah. if you can show acts of kindness to other people. And they're practical, uh, not as spiritual, but they actually, um, they all impact uh, your relationship with God and how how you feel connected with Him and with each other. I reckon. Yeah, yeah. Aww. So it's been really good, really good having church online as well and being able to still try to connect as much as possible. But yeah, just yeah. encouraging church family and and those who might be new this morning with us at church online that it, to stay connected and just yeah. Thanks so, so much, much, guys. It's been so good uh, being with you guys this morning. Amazing, amazing city campus pastors, and yeah. uh, we love you guys. We love Dios. Please say hello to Sanaa and to Ruben as yeah. well this morning. Okay. Starting on kids' church, so yeah. yeah. Oh, woo! <laughs> yes, that's great. That's it's coming up so soon. Good. Hey, yeah. bless you guys. Have a great day. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you Bye, so everyone. Much. Thank Bye. you, and uh, there's a lot of questions that uh, people are asking us about. Who is Jesus in this time? And, and what a great opportunity to uh, be encouraging people, and pointing people to Jesus. And I wanted to do that also for everybody online. And if you go to our church website, you can find a link that says Jesus at the top of the homepage. Take you straight to some information about who Jesus is. Also give you an opportunity to pray, a prayer just to receive Jesus into your heart. And uh, you can also let us know that you made that decision. That's so important for us. So we have the opportunity to pray for you, to pray with you. So let us know if you've made a decision for Christ. If you want any information, please contact us. And please don't forget that at 7 p.m. each evening, we're praying together as a nation during COVID-19. So please set your alarm and join us as we pray together at 7 p.m. each evening. And kids, please stay online um, and get connected to the Kids Life Service. It's coming up in a moment and it's a great service that's been prepared just for you today. Absolutely. And it's been so wonderful, hasn't it, Lucy? It has. We love everyone. We love all yeah. of you guys. We love you and we miss you so much. We do. It's so good to be able to do this together online and make sure even though we are isolating in this season to not isolate yourself from people. So use all the platform uh, means that we have available to us, whether it's Zoom, whether it's FaceTime, whether it's calling someone, texting someone, stay connected in this season. And thank you for joining us for our Sunday thank online you. service this morning. Be blessed and have a great week and we'll look forward to joining you next week. See ya, love you. See ya. Thank you.